Maybe programming isn't the issue. Perhaps the simple reason why your biceps are not growing is due to a lack of effort. You are not straining hard enough during your sets. Your reps in reserve are so far off from zero that it would explain why you've only responded to cheat curls and low repetitions. You don't feel the fatigue as much and you can actually push your sets to that limit while getting a bit of overload in there too. But really, it's not the percentage that made the difference. It was the effort. That is one of the most important variables for hypertrophy training. It's what separates the growers from the plateauers. Truth is, you can build muscle with weights as low as 35% of your one rep max, provided that those sets are taken close to or directly at failure. This is what constant research is demonstrating and clearly explains why many gym bros over the years have said that lightweight curls work. Because they do. If you perform a 3 set to 20 cable curl and form breakdown is not occurring to a significant extent, maybe it's a little bit of back bending at the end, but you're not swinging loads around, yet the bicep itself actually failed, you're able to push through that pain barrier which many of us fail to do with curls for some reason. I don't know what it is about the biases, but they seem to be tricky like that. Guess what? You're gonna grow just fine. As long as your volume is on point, using the right exercises, and you're inducing progressive overload, all else being managed, there should be no trouble building the biceps. <laughs> There's no magical secrets. You're doing fucking curls. How many ways can you curl? What can you really do to your programming? Okay, maybe from a strength training perspective, you can get more specific, you can include some low repetitions, maybe some one or maxes on the strict curl. You know, the stuff we can do that raises our performance. But for general hypertrophy training, how complicated is it really when you have gym bros who are making things so freaking easy? Just go to freaking failure. How about that? That's what I'm gonna recommend for today's video. I just want you to pay attention to this simple variable that's often overlooked. Are you curling hard enough or not? That's what separates fluff and pump from actual lightweight training that gets gains. You don't need to be on steroids to benefit from lower percentages. And maybe this is why some guys respond to occlusion training as well. Because the fatigue sets in so fast that now they're failing with lighter loads. But again, it's the failure that's causing these gains, guys. So pay attention, get that mind right. And if anything, film your sets. Because when you're in a calm state reviewing those videos, you'll find out very quickly if reps were really left in the tank. So if you were trying to hit 10 reps, only got eight, but then you're swinging the last two, but your biceps themselves aren't failing. You just move the weight to get up there. It's not the same training effect. You have reps in reserve. And in that case, you'd be better off doing a cheek curl that actually makes the biceps go to failure on the eccentric component and also the concentric, like you literally can't brute your way back up or just keeping everything tight but getting to that point where you literally can't bend your arm anymore. That's all it takes, guys. And it will set in quickly if you actually focus. Don't give up on your set when you were so close to getting the maximum results out of it, all right? That's my main message for today. Nothing complicated, but I want you taking most of your curling sets to failure. And don't worry about the recovery aspect that much. You are doing them after your pulling exercises, so they will be in a fatigue state, therefore, if the original weight was 45 pounds, you might be down to 35. And the elbows should not have issues if you're actually rotating variations to minimize overuse. It's only the minimalists who tend to have problems in this area. And also consider the fact that extensions tend to be far more aggravating on the elbows than the actual curls themselves. So unless you're doing high specificity training for raising the strict curl, lots of one rep maxes, three by threes, just treating like a competition lift, I don't see why you would have issues in this department. Therefore, I wouldn't be too concerned of injuries and the whole fatigue element of going to failure. Guys, it's a freaking curl. We're not talking about doing weighted chins, which even then have a pretty decent stimulus fatigue ratio. This is not a deadlift or a big compound movement where insane loads can be utilized. Most people can't even do 100 pounds on this lift. So you're probably gonna be fine. I highly doubt this will affect the overall system. In worst case, you can always do occlusion training or bump up those reps so it's less stressful on the joints. But now it's a bit more challenging as I point out at the beginning of this video. You have to push through that pain. But if you're able, you actually hit failure on say reps of 20 to 25, more power to you. At the end of the day, you gotta find what works with your psychology. The hypertrophy differences are less significant than you realize. As long as your effort is on point, there's nothing to worry about. So besides that, I got nothing more to say. Let's see your feedback in the comments section. 
and I'll talk to you in the next video.